a packed house out here on the grandstand. Two of the great young players right now, Michael Chang, age 20, taking on Wayne Ferreira, 20 years old. It is one all second set. Michael Chang has the first. Ferreira with a very solid approach off the two hander. And so love 15 and service at the moment. Not that crucial. Two breaks in the first two games of the second set. in the booth after a long doubles match. John McEnroe. John, tough luck out there, but we're glad to see you up here. Thanks, Barry. Love 30 now for Michael Ching. Third game, second set. Hit from Ferreira. John, you played Ferreira down in Australia. Tough match down there. This kid has a lot of talent. Oh, he's got a lot of talent. Everyone knows that on the, on the professional tennis circuit. And Vitas made a good point early on. I think it helped Wayne Ferreira that they switched the stadium match here to the grandstand. But his uh, the big question mark with Wayne is his consistency. And Vitas talked earlier about uh, that's probably his biggest problem right now is the inconsistency. And I think that showed when he served for the first set. Played a bit of a loose game there. At Five, Again, you think he may tries to hit that four a little too big sometimes, John? I think that's a, that, that's a problem when you serve for a set, for example. He takes a big swing on his forehand. There's not a lot of margin for error, and that's where it would pay off to maybe tighten up just a little bit. And then the other thing is that Wayne is not really sure, I think, whether he's a serve volley player or a backcourt player. He is an all-around player, but in that crucial moments, it's a little bit unclear in his mind what he should do. 30 all out here now. Third game. Second set. Chang with the first. 7 5. <laughs> Ferreira gets caught. That might be a good example of what you just said, John. A shot where maybe he thought he should come in a little quicker, hesitated just for a moment. Well, I think Wayne's doing a couple of good things, though. As as most people, tennis fans know, he was a silver medalist at the Olympics in doubles. He plays a lot of doubles, which is inevitably going to help his singles game. And as time goes on, he'll be more and more comfortable and be more and more decisive as what his, his best approach is. Baseline, Venus. Her Ferrer is certainly not short on talent. <laughs> Both off the backhand and forehand side. Chang tries to come in. Now he'll dip the backhand down the line. Now he gets the forehand. He had to half volley that down the line for a winner. Very difficult shot. Looked like an Andre Agassi forehand. <laughs> That's so true. But the same half volley forehand he misplayed in the game that he served for yeah. at 5 4. Played it very casual. Casual, you're right.
the smothers a forehand. So once again, a chance for Ferreira to pull off the third straight service break of the second set. Grandstand. It is packed over here in the grandstand. Let's go over to a stadium court and find out what's going on with Michael Barkin. Michael? All right, Barry. Sparse crowd here watching the number nine seed, Yvonne Lendl, warm up for tonight's featured match against number two seed, Stefan Edberg. The two are knotted at 13 wins apiece over the history of their matchup, although Yvonne has dropped the last three. So tonight he'll be looking to get even. And that'll be here, of course, on USA Network. We'll send it back to you, Barry. All right, Michael. As we look at Yvonne over there on the stadium, what a difference in atmosphere. A packed house over here on the grandstand. Well over 6,000 people. And three service breaks. What I've noticed already in the grandstand is how much better the conditions here are than over in the stadium. There was a real problem when we were playing the doubles with the wind swirling. And I've noticed that it, it's much better here than it is in the stadium, which is is good for the spectators because you're going right. to see better tennis. It's also better for the players, obviously. And that's always been like that, I felt. When I when I played in the stadium, I always had a little difficulty on a windy day because you never could really tell what direction it was coming. At least if you know it's going you know, from behind your back down, you could play easier on one side and hit harder from the other. But the grandstand plays a little bit like that. It's a little bit easier to judge the wind in here, I feel. Welcome to the U.S. Open. It is... Approximately 7 o'clock, and you are looking at the grandstand court. I'm Barry McKay, along with Vitas Garolitis and John McEnroe, bringing you quarterfinal action. Michael Chang going against Wayne Ferreira, the fourth seed. Chang going against Ferreira, seeded number 12. Over 6,000 people packed into a grandstand court, watching two 20-year-olds go at it. Three service breaks in the second set. Chang with the first 7-5. Ferreira trying to off the first service hold of the second set. John, did you like playing on the grandstand court? For that very reason that we've just discussed, I like playing on the grandstand. I, I think most players really hated playing on the grandstand when the sun came over right. and half the court Shadow. was covered and half wasn't. But once you got past that, it was, a, I thought, a great court to play on. Kind of like more like an indoor field, too, because the sound is a lot better, is it not? Sound is really enjoyable when you have that, that little ping that the players can hear. It really, it's really nice to hear. Ferreira, another loose point. It's love 15. Now that's what could separate him from being number 12 or 13 in the world he is now and to really solidifying a top 10 spot because as Vitas has alluded to earlier, he's extremely talented. Just why? We saw him play down in Memphis, John, against Washington in the final. Played brilliant tennis for about a set and a half, and then it just all went away. And he lost to Malibu Washington, playing much better for a while. Well, I've talked to Wayne on a number of occasions, and he's very aware of this. And he's, I feel he's improving monthly in that regard. No missing. He was a semifinalist at the Australian Open. He made a strong showing at Wimbledon in the round of 16, losing to Becker in five sets. And here he is in the quarterfinals with a real shot to get to the semi. So he's really come a long way in the last 18 months. And Barry, the other thing that people don't realize about Wayne Ferrer is, is how quick he is. He's considered one of the quickest players on the tour. You're looking at the quickest player on the tour in Michael Chang. But Wayne Ferrer is definitely in the top five. Especially for a guy six foot two. Well, he'd be happy to hear that he's six foot two. But <laughs> well, they called him six foot on the tape, but Vitas and I both agreed he was slightly over six. <laughs> Ferreira with a quick game on his own serve, three one. 
He reminds me of the old cat, Miloslav Machir, the great Czech player who's unfortunately been injured the past couple of years with a bad back. And by the way, for those people that were fans of Machir, uh, he's still hoping to make a comeback. What did he play? And this guy, Wayne Ferrer, the way he moves really reminds me of him. He really surprised me. I played him down in the quarterfinals in Australia, and his movement is so smooth. Taking a little bit of extra time now. My suspicion is that uh, Vitas gave the edge to Michael in the intangibles. And I think that's an example of that right there. Michael got down a break in the second, and he deliberately held things up there. And you can see Wayne talking to himself. He wasn't happy about it. But he's got to forget about that now and just uh, try to win this set because he had a break in the first and didn't win that. say you think Chang is maybe the fastest guy playing John I think he can stop in the first couple of steps maybe of anybody that's ever played the game he, he just gets off to such a quick start oh, he's unbelievably quick oh! he doesn't have that famous bunny step that uh, Mr. Garolitis to my left used to have but he, he, he attacks the court the way he runs Step, John, the kind of step that Vitas used when he went over and uh, took out about 15 flowers a few yeah, years I ago. I wish we had a replay of that famous shot that Vitas is probably the best shot ever hit the open. Here we see Wayne Ferreira hitting it back, and this is his quickness that I was talking about. He really got to that ball fairly easily, but uh, tried to go for a little bit too much there. And he also showed a lot of hustle that one for him that he sliced back, you know, he fought, clawed his way back into the point. Even though he lost it, he's making Michael Chang work for every point at the same time, so that's important. Chang up 30-15, but down a break, 1-3 in the second set. Well, what looked like a pretty good approach shot, but Michael handles that ball so well off the floor and keeps it low. Well, it was a smart tactic. He came up the middle, tried to cut off Chang's angle, but uh, as you said, Chang's one of the best at passing. And he, he kept it low. He didn't go for the outright winner, which is very smart. Even if Wayne had returned that, he would have had a pretty good opportunity for the next pass. Chang still down 2-3. Stay with us on USA. We're at the U.S. Open. see it yet. Maybe it's a... What is it, Jeffrey? Oh, here we go. Australian Open. Open, third round. Well, then he lost to Bates. First. What was the last tournament he won? Was in the Lipton, maybe? Yeah. No. Yeah. <clears throat> 
Interesting. Mm. Well. <clears throat> how'd you play against Jane? Or, you know, how'd you play against him in Australia? So, um, a so. little flat, a little flat when we played. Welcome back to the U.S. Open. We're on the grandstand court watching Michael Chang, the number four seed, go against Wayne Ferreira. A look at Chang's revenge grand slam results. Australian third round loss. French out in the third again to Colty. Wimbledon, a tough loss there to Jeremy Bates. Those British people go crazy when any of their guys play well. And Bates had a pretty good run for a while. Yes. Well, you don't want to give Michael Chang a, Michael Chang a lot of time on the passing shot. And as you can see from his Grand Slam results this year, this term is extremely important to Michael Chang because he's had subpar performances in the majors this year. Sorry. The end of paper blowing down from up on top. You got to remember there's about 500 people packed up in that stadium area that overlooks this grandstand. They're busy having a little dinner up there. Either that or they're throwing things because they're not they haven't been allowed in. Good first serve from Wayne Ferreira. Third service ace. Interestingly enough, Chang has served three aces. I think people realize Michael's got a pretty good flat serve these days. Volley. 30 all. Ferreira with the break, leading 3 2. 30 all, though. Wayne Ferreira is the only top player at this point that's using, actually using a wide body racket. There's been a lot of talk about the wide bodies, but he's the only top player that actually uses one. Why do you think that is, John? Well, he told me before the match he can't play with anything else. He doesn't why? feel like he has any power. You're asking me why yeah, he's why? the only player using it. No, no, I, I was asking you why more players aren't using the wide body. I really don't think the technology's been uh, perfected enough, and the, the players don't really believe in the wide bodies. They're really made for the average player that might go out once or twice a week and play. Shot, but it didn't turn out that way. A heck of a forehand down the line from Wayne Ferreira. Maybe that was the wide body there. Mm -hmm. I think the reason people are buying the wide body is because of the increased power that they get. So the average player, the B players, they can go out there and feel like they're hitting the ball much harder than they were previously. But the professionals, when they need to be real exact, are having a lot of trouble with the control factor. Temptation to go for a little too much against Michael Chang, knowing how fast he is. No question about it. No question about it whatsoever. When you got a guy there that runs every ball down and is given 120 percent, you do have a tendency to go for a little more. Just 
Cross long. Again, Ferreira. Trying to keep that ball as deep as possible. Just over the baseline. And so now Michael Chang with a chance to break back over here. Down 2-3. Consider that shot an unforced error in the sense that Wayne Ferreira was putting an awful lot of pressure on Michael Chang in that point. He's extremely strong off the ground. He does have a tendency to go for too much on occasion, but that's his style right now. He likes to be aggressive. As you see, Wayne Selwyn has had 20 more unforced errors in a set and a half than Michael Scott, but Michael uh, is not, not going to be happy that he missed that shot on the other hand. Good slice serve out wide. Especially considering that was a break point. I mean, if, if nothing else, you want to make the player earn the point. Oh, yes. Solid low forehand volley from Wayne Ferreira. And so he holds her. It is now 4-2 Ferreira. Here on the grandstand. Let's go down to Cindy Schmerler, who is with Keith Deepram from South Africa. Thanks, Bear. I'm with Wayne Ferreira's coach, Keith Deepram. And uh, Keith, what I would like to know, John McEnroe was just saying in the booth that the problem with playing Michael Chang is that he's so fast that you tend to go for too much. Is that a problem that Wayne had when he was up a break in the first set? Um, to, a, to a lesser extent, uh, yes, sir, but I think he uh, was a little unlucky as well. He had two lead courts against him, unfortunately, but uh, after that, Michael played a very good game to break through. Um, at this particular time, Wayne is a little erratic. Uh, he's, he's going for a little bit too much at some time, but uh, he seems to have the pattern down as to what to do against Michael, move him around and then get him on his backhand wide. Well, yesterday, Wayne commented that really the only thing he's lacking at this point is a little bit of experience. Is he gaining it tonight? Absolutely. Uh, this is very reminiscent of his uh, match with John McEnroe at uh, the Australian Open with all the crowd, uh, you know, shouting for uh, Michael. And uh, I think he loves the occasion right now. Now, there was some discussion. This match was supposed to take place on the stadium. Were they upset that it was moved to the grandstand? And will this be a distinct disadvantage if Wayne should win to play a semifinal without having played on the stadium court yet? Um, I don't think so. I think, you know, you go down uh, one match at a time and it doesn't matter where you play your matches. Uh, you know, you, you should try and uh, uh, obliterate all crowds and people like that and just concentrate on what you have to do out there. Well, now Wayne's up a break in the second. Are we going to see an upset out here? Uh, I think we, uh, we might. Good. Thanks for stopping, Keith. Good luck. Back to you guys in the booth. All right, Cindy Ferreira up again in this game, leading 4-2 with a break. Now with another slight chance here. Love 30. <laughs> Keith Diapram, one of the fine players from a, another era down in South Africa. Hit a few balls against him in the altitude there in Johannesburg. Ooh, that court. Goes perfect, for the top. Time, perfect time for the top spin lob, and that's what he was trying to execute. Just took his eye off the ball for a fraction of a second. Chang sees the left corner. Now, great anticipation. Moves in real quick. But Wayfarer had a chance. Chang moved in so tight to the net. It was the perfect play. He just rushed it a little bit. Chang from Love 30 down gets even at 30 all. Do you think Michael has improved his serve, John, over the last 18 months? Oh, he's definitely improved his first serve. Uh, I noticed it last year when I played him at the U.S. Open myself. I lost to him in the third round, and uh, he won a lot of free points off the first serve. Triple net. 
Oh. Good looking low volley from Michael Chang. You really have to get down to that volley forever, keeping the ball down really low. But Wayne shows great mobility around the court, trying to hustle to get that last shot. But it's that low forehand volley of Michael Chang that won the point for him. Coming up at 7.30, Yvonne Lendl, Stefan Edberg on the stadium court. We are on the grandstand with a quarterfinal between Wayne Ferreira, the number 12 seed, and Michael Chang, seed at four. Leaned into that one. He used that effectively in the first set to go up 5-4. And that's a good play to, to use against Michael Chang because his second serve does sit up. And if you have the ability to hit as much with as much pace as he does off that two-hander, that's a good tactic. And it'll scare you when you're hitting your second serve when you know a guy's going to jump all over it. Chance now for Ferreira. John, of the guys you played, who had the best return of serve? Who gave you the most trouble with return of serve? Well, early on it was Jimmy Connors. Now it's Andre Agassi who's considered the best returner in the game. Jim Curry has also got a very underrated return of serve. Up Bjorn Borg. Uh, I don't think that that was his strongest suit. Certainly not against a left hander. Right. Uh, he was a, obviously a great player, but it wasn't his return of serve that separated him from the rest of the pack. Played pretty far back, didn't he, Borg, on the return of serve? Very far. Yeah. Break point for Wayne Ferreira to go up 5-2 out here on the grandstand. And there it is. A service break for Wayne Ferreira. And so Ferreira now... Leading 5 2, he'll serve for the second set when we return. Full moon over the grandstand tonight. Just about 7.30 and coming up at 7.30, the Lendl Edberg match will start. But right now, we've got a great match going on the grandstand. Wayne Ferreira taking on Michael Chang. Ferreira now serving, leading 5 2. Barry, I think we saw something interesting in the last game. We were talking about how Chang's first serves improved, but there's a huge discrepancy between his first and second serve. 
When Wayne took that second serve and was aggressive with it, let me finish this after this next point. Great athletic ability there by Wayne Frere. But when Wayne was able to be so aggressive on that second serve, I think it changed Chang's mentality. And he was forced to go with the, take a lot off the first serve. And the, the, the point that he broke, he only hit it 75 miles an hour his first serve. And here we say Wayne getting, Wayne getting up for the overhead. Great strength in his legs. So, John, what you're saying is that, that the Chang second serve is, is very attackable. I think Vetus made a good point. If Wayne is able to continue to attack it, he's going to force Chang to go for a lot less on the first serve, which will be to his advantage. He won't win any free points, Chang. It will help Ferreira's chances. Ferreira now two points away from evening this match at a set apiece over here on the grandstand. That loose game on his own serve, Vetus in the first set. We saw it kind of disappear quickly. And he started this game off better, winning the first two points, but then a backhand error, and that last point he was tentative, hit the ball in the middle of the court, giving Chang an opportunity to hit the two-hander, but he follows that up with an ace. <laughs> so, <laughs> so much throw that, that. Area out the window. <laughs> and so Wayne Ferreira now. I think this is a perfect example of where you see how much more important the serve is probably than ever before in, in the history of tennis. The players are capable, capable of winning so many free points off the serve that they can play two extremely loose points. You think, what's going on with Wayne Ferrer now? And then he hits an ace and he's back to set point. How many players have we seen in the draw? Jim Currier, Boris Becker, Yvonne Lendl, Richard Krychek get out of games with just some big bombs. I think it turned out last night the serve was a big factor in that match. Even everybody talks about their big, big forehands. Well, that was the difference. Everything was pretty much equal, but Currier served about 20 aces, and what, Andre served five, maybe? He had three in the game that he served for the match, Currier. Set point out here for Ferreira. Second serve. Oh! This is it. This serves only his second double fault of the night, but what a time for it. Back to Deuce. Reminder coming up just momentarily. The other lower men's quarterfinal. Yvonne Lindel taking on Stefan Edberg. On the stadium court. That was a good shot of Chang's grip, like many of the young players today. For example, Agassi and Curran in yesterday's match, they used that Western grip way over, helps produce an excessive amount of topspin, and, and you can hit the ball a lot harder with these. Ferreira all over the forehand volley, and so Wayne Ferreira out here on the grandstand. Solid finish there. Here's a replay of the set point. Wayne hits a good first serve. Good volley behind Michael Cheng, which is a great play to do. And he's really good at that forehand, that almost full swinging forehand cross court. He loves to sort of finish off the points that way. Who wouldn't, though, right? <laughs> yeah. He's kind of a flourish player, isn't he, John? He, he, he tries shots like that big overhead that he tried when about six feet over the baseline, and it was set point. And that's why he's a little tough to play. He had four unforced errors in that game, ends up winning the game. Now, I know when I was playing, once you got to the quarterfinals, there's no way you could hit four and four stars in the game and expect to win it. That's why the serve is so much more important now. I used to like your second serve, Vitas. Kind of interested me. <laughs> you might have. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Vera 
trying to come in quickly. You saw Wayne just look up there. The wind really kicked up in, in that point. It really looks like a swirl, and that's really going to play havoc in the Lendl Edberg match coming up on stadium. Conditions a lot different over on the stadium. A lot different over there, and you know how high Stefan and Yvonne throw up their tosses. saying to himself that's what I meant to do a couple games ago with that one that I almost completely whiffed on but if you watch this this is a beautiful stroke right here he whips it almost like a half volley once again perfectly placed you have no idea who's hitting that shot Michael took that extra step too towards the net Whoa! there's really no way to defend that you know even if you step back a foot there'd be no way to come back and hit that overhead so you're better off if he had the volley to play it. that Michael's not a great volleyer. He certainly improved his volley, but he did something very smarter. He didn't go for an outright winner on that first passing shot, and here he does a great passing shot up the line to get to 15-30. First game in the third would be a huge game for him to get on top to start off the third set. That was the quickness I was talking about. He sort of glided over there and, and had all, time, all kinds of time. Talk about mature, you did earlier, John. That was sort of a mature type of motion along the baseline that he used to just glide along that baseline. 15-30 now, Michael. Trouble. First game, third set. long and so 1540 and a big welcome to our nighttime audience on USA if you're just tuning in at 730 this is grandstand action as Michael Chang and Wayne Ferreira are in a tremendous match out here a set apiece and Chang serving down double break point first game third set. Another piece of paper distracts Michael to far court. Break points one. Ferreira doing pretty well, like real well. Just out. He missed that one by about a quarter of an inch to go five out of five. So his percentage is pretty awesome right now. And when you miss a ball like that, when you went for your shot, you hit it right, you don't mind missing that way. Playing the score well, too. 15 40, he misses it. He's still got another break point coming up. And it's and it kind of scares the server too. He has shows that he has no respect for your server. He just takes a swipe at it and, and just misses the break point. Oh. Michael going for a big serve again, 112. Anyone on the tennis tour knows Michael Chang is an extremely intelligent player. And that was a great play to do on the second break point. He comes in on a good solid approach out down the line, and this is a great volley. That's a great stab on a big point. So Michael Chang from 1540 down, 
brings it to Deuce. He's always thinking of ways to win matches. And that's what separates him. That's why he's number four in the world right now. Oh, yes, Chang. Tremendous two-hander from about 15 feet behind the baseline. He may be hitting some first serves at maybe 110 miles an hour, but that's not why he's number four in the world. I can tell you right now. Here's Wayne with the stretch volley. Just barely misses it. Chang, one of the better counter punchers in the game. Ferreira came in, hit the ball really deep. Chang got the ball down low. That's an example, I think, of what Ferreira's coach was talking about just before. He does seem to have found the rhythm that he's comfortable with playing Michael Chang. So it seems perfectly content, looks very poised, very serious. I've seen Wayne play a lot this year, and this is the most serious I've seen him, really. I mean, he really realized that this is a great opportunity for him. Serve down the middle. And guys, correct me if I'm wrong. As I've watched these two sets, it looks as though Ferreira's never really rushed in the backcourt. He always seems to have time to set up for his shots. Michael Chang's not really doing very well in, in moving them out of position when they're both on the baseline. Wayne seems to always have a lot of time to hit his shots. So. You were talking earlier, Barry, that maybe Wayne Ferrer had almost a bigger forehand as Agassi and Curry, and that's a perfect example right there. He really opened up his body the way the two other players do and just take a tremendous swing at it. It's tough to pick, isn't it, John? I mean, he faces net. It's really hard to tell which way he's going There's with that There's no shot. way of knowing. It really is. It's just, it's a real game. You have to guess. You really have to guess at that point. Back to Deuce. Big game here. First game of the third set. We got a match going here on the grandstand. One love chain, the third set. Start of 1991 and Stefan Edberg had too much points in the Australian Open semifinal. He ended up suffering a heartbreaking loss. <coughs> okay. All right, John, they want. Yeah, no, they want you to go to the uh, state. Hey, let, let John talk to you for a second. Uh, two more games, or do you want me to leave? I think they're ready to, to have you slip over there. Two more games, okay. and. All right. Great. Hey, Joel. Yes. How's it going down there? It's beautiful, Bear. You like this match so far? What do you think? Joel? It's going to be a long one for you, buddy. <laughs> Joel, bye.
welcome to those of you joining us for our evening session on day 11 of the 1992 U.S. Open. We have been on with wall-to-wall -wall tennis since 11 this morning. The men's quarterfinals, Chang Ferrer on the grandstand, and you're looking right now at Stefan Edberg at Yvonne Lendl Stadium Court, where capacity will enjoy a classic matchup of two of the game's greats. That is just a few minutes away. Currently now, they are in the third set, though, over at the grandstand. We've had a couple of rain delays today. Also a doubles match from start to finish that took close to seven hours. But let's head back to the grandstand now and rejoin Barry McKay. Barry? All right, Joel. We are on the grandstand where Michael Chang, the number four seed at this championship, is taking on the number 12 seed, Wayne Ferreira. This is Ferreira at the bottom of your picture going against Chang. Quarterfinals, 15 love. Ferreira serving down love one in the third. They split the first two sets. Actually, Ferreira had a 4-2 lead in that first set, but Chang came roaring back to win it. That's a shot, John. We see him. It looks to me like he might try and just overplay that ball a little bit. Yeah, the previous shot, he hit a great topspin lob winner to go up 15 love, and there you see him sort of overhit that one. It is a big swing, and that's going to happen, and he shouldn't be afraid that that's going to happen, but every now and then, he needs to tighten up a little bit, especially on the big points and the, against the great players. On this replay, you see Chang hit a, hitting a passing shot. Wayne Ferrer made a great stab volley, and Chang just hit an unbelievable pass to, to win that point. That was showing you why these are two of the quickest guys in the game. I was just about ready to say, look how well Ferreira moves on that volley. I thought he put the ball away. And this is where Chang can be so tough. He just keeps that ball coming back. And now a chance for Michael to break. That get that he just made really won him two points. Because you know Wayne was still thinking about that previous points. Instead of being 45 up, he's 30, 40 down. But there's the old serve again. <laughs> We saw that when he served for the second set. Four unforced errors, but a couple of big first serves to win the set for him. Oh. Well, Ferreira thought he had a good serve. The lines person behind Chang there, way out, trying to look in from an angle. Getting down well again to that volley. Good technique. Gets all the way down. Gets the racket out in front. Both players waiting now. Another piece of paper floating slowly down from about 50 feet above this court. Ace number five. And it seems that Wafer mixes up his serve really well. He thinks when he's out there, he goes out wide a couple of times and he'll go right back down the middle. That's a great first volley. 
And John, I'm sure you'll agree that no matter how hard you serve or how fast, if you don't mix up your serve, eventually the good service returns will just get on it, just much like the fastball in baseball. Wayne Ferreira, nice motion on the serve and gets down great technique. See how he got down really low and punched straight through that shot. Strong wrist. Great point. Great service game. He recovers well too, doesn't he? After he hits that first volley, balance is pretty good for a big guy. I mean, take it from a big guy who wasn't too well balanced, I'll tell you. It's not easy to move up <laughs> Well, I there. think what you notice is that Wayne Ferrer is really a natural volleyer. Yeah, he really moves so well around there. He just anticipates well. You can see, you can always pick out a natural volleyer, I think. Chang is just not that comfortable up there. You think he will, will ever become a better volleyer, John? I think he's certainly capable of improving, but he's never going to be a quote-unquote natural volleyer. He prefers to hit the big approach shot and put away the easy volley. Good example of that in last night's match a couple years ago. The only time Andre Agassi came to net was to pick up balls and to shake your hand after a match. Yesterday, a majority of the big points that he won were on his volley. And the same for Curtis. So, uh, you know, the great guys, the great champions, they'll try to improve their games. And they know that's a part they have to work on. Just long. So Chang quickly to 40 love. You, you like a few quick games, don't you, on your own serve in a best of five set match? Absolutely, especially when the going gets tight. I usually like a quick service game in an eight game pro set. It made no difference. Whoa. I'm sure Stefan Edberg, who's coming up on the stadium, would enjoy a couple easy service games as well. <laughs> we'll be showing you that match very shortly. Edberg and Lindell over on the stadium. Huge forehand. There's that forehand you were talking about, Barry. <laughs> you can hear this crowd. They just kind of went, ah, oh, when, when he hit this thing. Let's look but, at it again. Well, that one really exploded off his racket. He really turned around, and you can see right from the inception, he was going to hit it as hard as he could, and it went in. Still with game point here. One all. seemed to be an easy game for Michael Chang. That's turned out to be a difficult one. Michael Chang leading 40-15. Now with two unforced errors. <laughs> 